This this new record, um, I need to get this uh, to this right away. From what I understand, your record was recorded on the same console that they recorded Thriller by Michael Jackson. Is that yes, true? Yes. Yeah. We 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 found it on eBay. Bronco found it on eBay. How did you, uh, Laurent, who's also known as Bronco, how did you find the Michael Jackson's th- Thriller console on on eBay? It just happened to be there. It yeah, by chance. We were very lucky that the guy selling it was very crazy. <laughs> so people thought he, he didn't own it and he was just trying making that up yeah and people didn't want this you didn't get into a bidding war or something he was so crazy that we were the only one he it was on on sale for two years maybe it was first for one million dollars i think <laughs> and then we got it for after uh, like 99 percent uh, discount discount yeah and and where did he get it? Was he is he a, in the music business? Yeah, yeah, he's um, he's owner of a Christian rock uh, music r- music label. Yeah. yeah, right. And he just happened to end up with the console. Yeah, yeah, which by the way I understand is huge. Right, it's physically very big. It's a big. Uh, it it costed it cost as much to ship to France as it is to buy it. <laughs> Where it's was like it? From, from the United States? Ping pong table. Right. And, and, you, and did it... Uh, tell me about why it was important to record with that. I mean, are you Michael Jackson fans? Was that album particularly ins- inspirational to you? Yes, but it's it's a console that's very specific. It, it worked. I feel like most of the brains um, in music worked on on making it better right so that one is very specific it can do if uh if i want to be a bit spinal tap uh ish it goes up to 11 for real (laughs) you know (laughs) it goes up to 40k right right so um so it's it's but uh so we bought it because of its its functions but also we you know we it, it felt like working on something that inspired you when you were a kid uh was so much better than walking with just any console or so uh do you think it actually yeah. informed the sound of the record Marco? yeah because uh, on top of of all this it sounds really great and uh so it it made everything easier i would imagine a warmer analog kind of sound would be what you'd come out with right yeah exactly so then this record i mean this record is is a lot more. I would use the. I want to use the word maximalist than your previous work. There's layers on top of layers, which seems like a shift from the more simple recording, say from two thousand and nine, if not your earlier records. Um, was that a conscious move? Um, maybe it's because of that console, because we wanted to record so much with it <laughs> that we just added keep. We kept adding layers and layers, and that's one possibility. The other one is is probably that we wanted to uh, achieve something different. Yeah, we um, there was a there was we were looking for a specific sound, and that was, I think every, all the entire album has a sound that's very specific and and a bit more hostile, a bit more aggressive or something. And uh, we spent a good six months trying to tame that sound because it was too um too hot they huh. said we we learned when people told us it's really hot we were not sure what that meant we thought like oh, it's good it's sexy it's good like what what do you mean we didn't know it w- they meant distorted and they meant but yeah how did you how did you end up taming it then we we just tried to um you know just try to you don't really control it it's more like a kid that's growing up you just you know, hmm. you give you just follow up. You just have a. Um, you just look at it, and you just, you know, it exists, and you don't. You don't really uh, uh, reject the song. You don't. You just let it be what it's supposed to be. But you guys are notorious for taking a long time to make a record. You're very precise, or you're interested in, in in something. You're searching for something precise when you make a record, correct? Uh, yeah, we love to be control freaks in the studio, <laughs> and then after that, we we let it go, but. Right. In the studio, it's a, it's, it's a bit. Um, it can be a neurotic experience sometimes. Some of the uh, you're all control freaks, or is one I somebody so. more than others? Yeah. 
No, we're, we're nice control freaks. We're, <laughs> right, we're right, friendly, right. democratic control freaks. Control freaks. Yes, now that's handy if you're going to be a control freak. Make sure the others are too. Uh, and and th- I would say that, that there's an epic feel to the record. Um, some of the songs, it almost reminds me of the use of strings on, on Manic Street Preacher's Everything Must Go. It's this very big, uh, epic sound, like the, like the songs are, maybe not lyrically always, but almost anthems. Would, would that be something that you were going for on this? Uh, we wanted to have anthemic things and also very uh, intimate. You know, We want the contrast, basically. That's... When you one color on its own is pretty boring, but if you have a combination, you can achieve nice effects. I think on every level of this record, there is contrast of things that shouldn't go together, and and we hope they create some kind of new new kind of beauty. Like what? What would be an example of that? Things that shouldn't go together. Uh, well. For instance, when you do a professional record, you shouldn't use those kind of keyboards we use all the time. <laughs> right. That costs the little toy keyboards, yeah, twenty dollars, and that. But we we could have you know gone to Abbey Road and have you know the London right. Symphonic Orchestra, but there was more something more dangerous and exciting to to make string sounds with a twenty dollars. Toy, toy keyboard, you know? I'm really interested in this control freak thing, actually, because it, so uh, because that's it is hard to do that in a band of four people, and you all claim you all do right. You all work together on the songs, right? Yeah. So how 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 does the how do the deliberations how do the conversations go? How how do you end up coming to consensus? Well, there's no. The idea is that there's no consensus because consensus leads to. You know, something in the middle, something that's not really interesting. So it's it's more uh, four strong political forces that try to make their point. And and I think we just know each other so well since we're kids that we we don't really need to talk. We just uh, we just argue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that sounds healthy. <laughs> and, and does and. and w- w- what if is is there any, was there a member of a band that resisted all these layers or was everybody on on track for this record? It's a it's a very well record. I think it's the only record we made that um, re, resol- uh, revealed it itself um, at the end of the at the last two weeks. Each song was done. Um, for for two years basically we started them all wow. pretty much together and they all were finished at the same time I think it's because the previous record we didn't have a management we didn't have a record company mm-hmm. we didn't have so we needed to have at least a few songs just to just you know to get a record deal or two this one this one we we had that freedom that we could do no one would listen to it no one would we had total independence that we didn't even have to make that effort to finish something. Right. It could be totally yours. Yeah. And you know so, that there's still going to be an audience. Yeah. So it was revealed the last two weeks, basically, and which was really exhausting for us because there was nothing. You know, if you would come to the studio as a friend and listen, we wanted to play you something. There was nothing to play at you. There was nothing. There was no, you know, our family, our friends didn't want to show what we were making for that long. And what what do you mean it was revealed? It just uh <clears throat> we accepted the songs and they they looked and they became songs at the end. Huh. Yeah. Uh, it's there's so much of your language around the, this is is so is so esoteric. It's very much you you see this as artists like almost a conversation would happen with visual artists. Laura, I, re- I read a, an interview you did around the time of your last record when you said that you and Phoenix are slaves to that thing we are reaching for. Is that is that a particular thing, or is the, does the thing that you're reaching for always change? The thing is, yeah, we we are looking for something, f- but we don't know what it is. We but when when it's there, we there's the feeling of evidence. Here it is finally, mm. <laughs> and uh, so exhausting it can be because you don't know how far you are. You always have the impression that you are very far, 
and sometimes it just happens. But and well, when it's it exhausting happens, searching for something that you don't know what it is. Yeah, especially if you're not sure it, it exists. <laughs> right, <laughs> but it's a magic. It's a sort of resonance. It's a sort of artistic plateau or something, and you all kind of know it when you hit it. Is that exactly, what it is? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and would you say this record has that for you? The plateau. Yeah, I like the plateau <laughs> image. That talks to me. Yeah. Every uh, every moment. I mean, every part of the song must have this feeling, yeah. and hopefully, it's you know a, a lot of different, very strong emotion that we we combine. That's a very high standard to hold yourselves to at a time when people are putting you know write songs and throw them out on the internet for their fans every month or two because you're supposed to maintain the momentum in this in the new world in this in, uh, new uh, paradigm of the the music industry. Um, do you ever get worried about that? I mean, I know this is four years between records. Oh, uh, we can't, we can't worry about this because we will we make a choice. bad record. No? You know, we have to be selfish at this level. It's worth the wait. It's, it's. Uh, you have to think that if it's, you know, make it good for you, and if it's good for you, eventually someone will like it as well as, you know. Does someone. anyone get antsy? Management, your. Your uh, no, well, record label, anybody say, come on, guys, enough already, we need a record. No, they know us now. You know, <laughs> they know, uh, they just let, no, they, they could be more, you know, they, they, they know us. Yeah. There's, a, there's a tremendous camaraderie, it seems, with you guys. You, you've said in various interviews that you're no good alone as individual musicians, and that it's the foursome that brings the magic. Uh, Branco, you you even said you're not very good musicians, and, and uh, Christian was quoted in The Guardian in 2010 saying, we don't know how to play with other musicians. I tried with friends to do sessions a few times, and it was always a disaster. Uh, <laughs> in a way, that's a, it's a very sweet testament to the power of this combination of the four of you. Do you always feel that way? Yeah, more than ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's totally true. But you know uh, those little ants, you know ants. Ants, yes. You know those biggest architectural uh, masterpieces that they can build. You know? Yes, they build them together. They build, but you know, it's taken separately. They are just ants. You know? Right. We are, we but are apparently, like these four ants can't work with any other ants. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they, <laughs> yeah, well, they only build the, the pyramids we together. Are, right? We are a very small colony. That's why it takes a, <laughs> a, a long time. Right. And is that true of you too, Thomas? You, you can't. You you have trouble working with with others outside of this four. I mean, I love that the, that you've found an alchemy. You know, that's what we the romance that we like to think of bands, the Beatles, whatever. You know, it's like it's the four of you together. But is it really true that you you have trouble with doing sessions with anyone else? But I, I wouldn't even want to do them. I wouldn't be good at it. But I I wouldn't. Uh, I would. I wouldn't be. We wouldn't be a. Tr uh, you know, it's there's nothing. Uh, I think it, it'd be sad. I'd be. i just be. I wouldn't want to do that. But uh, I think it's true that taken separately will not. You know, there's no. Also, we play with this that that there's no. Um, we grew up with this idea that, you know, being skilled musicians wasn't the point really. It was about making good records. And I think we grew up in contradiction to a lot of um, <clears throat> people making music in Paris or, or well, they wanted to practice their instrument badly and be session musicians and be the best at... For us, it was so unique that we were the only ones try to... We are sort of the only ones putting our brains together and it made so much more sense than just spending 12 hours a day just... Ruining your fingers on an instrument. That's fascinating. You didn't want to be skilled musicians. You wanted to make great records. Yeah. Meaning that the two, you can separate the two. You can create something great. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. We, we, you, we were one of the first generation that could make an album in their bedroom. You know, mm -hmm. that sounded good. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were lucky about that because that allowed us to be bad musicians. Oh, by the way, Paul McCartney, you know, Elvis Costello, they said many times growing up, they, they didn't know how to read music. They're, yeah. they're just going on instinct and what they learn with their instruments. Uh, Lon, you, you also once said that boredom is the enemy of the human being. 
So it's these are like John, quotes from like Plato or something. But um, uh, you guys have been a band for more than 15 years now. Uh, even though people have really come to know on a mass level Phoenix in the last three or four years, you guys have known each other for a long time. How do you fight that uh, idea of it becoming uh, a job, a vocation, uh, the ennui, the boredom um, this this far into the career? Our, our trick is to keep it very uh, amateur in a way. <laughs> and um, it demands actually a lot of effort. It's easier to be pro than to, to be semi-pro. I have to ask you what that means. <laughs> That's fascinating. What you? How do you keep it amateur? We, You know, when we have the choice between doing something on our own, or doing it with very skilled individuals, we always prefer the the amateur route, which brings more charm. We believe in charm more than in perfection, and uh, and also we um, on you know the most the hardest part is on tour. You know? Tour touring mm. can bring you to the most boring life ever, which is the rock rock star life. People should know it's the most boring <laughs> thing ever. Right. So we fight very hard every day to make to make something interesting. And how do you do that? How do you fight that? What is your how is, how is your touring life not boring? Uh, we have bikes. <laughs> do you? Yeah. You go bike riding in each city you go to. You have to to just escape. You know this. This block, where yeah, are you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The we hotel and the block. venue, and yeah. Then our our trick, we we love sake, you know, and we we sake the sake the drink, yeah, the, the sake, drink. yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. One of yeah. our tricks is that we we check where the drunk. best where the Safe. best sake is in you know oh, okay in town and we go to this part you of the you bike to that to the, to the sake yeah, this place is, this could this is one of the this strategy. is the starting point this yeah. is the starting point <laughs> it's this is the coolest band to be in in the world you have quite a methodology to this <laughs> <laughs> and then what happens? You go to this, uh, you get some sake, uh, and then and then tell sake, me. Sake, huh? Then yeah. hopefully you get the advices from the people that own the the shop the sushi, of where to the go. Yeah. The sushi shop, yeah. chef. <laughs> sushi chef are good. But some would, you know, just to press the point a little bit. Some would. I mean, you obviously have a tremendous confidence in in the four of you and the partnership. But some would suggest it's, it might be arrogant or stubborn to say we're going to say no to working with others and just do our own thing. I mean, where would you draw the line on that? If, if Yo-Yo Ma came and said, can I play cello, you know, strings with you guys? Do you say, no, it's our, it's the four of us. <laughs> Stay no, away it, from us, Yo-Yo Ma. <laughs> no, but it's, it's always, uh, it's always um, uh, I'm not sure, organic. I would use, like when you have... Has to feel you know, real. When we played with Daft Punk, for instance, at Madison Square Garden, it's they came to see us at the Hollywood Bowl, and uh, we are friends. And we thought that it was it was weird that we were both there and making music, and that we could do something together. And so it's more the events that bring something, the occasion. You know that it's more the event justifies the. Occasion, I'm not sure that's... Yeah, yeah, it has yeah. to feel natural. You know what I mean? to, yeah, exactly. Than, than, as yeah. opposed to a manufactured, we're going to put you together with exactly. this producer or something. Yeah. Um, the, very quickly before, I know you're going to play another song for us. I'm, I'm really stoked that you're actually playing here in Studio Key 2. I'm speaking with Phoenix, by the way, and the latest record is uh, called Bankrupt. It comes out next month uh, on Universal Music in Canada, Glass Note in the United States. Uh, Tamar, you called your, your last record Wolfgang Amadeus Phoenix, certainly a, a real declaration of arrival if there ever was one. The new record is called Bankrupt. Yes. What were you trying to say? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think we were... When we started this record, we knew we didn't want it to be um, something like Ludwig von Phoenix. You know, we knew what we didn't want to to achieve before we 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 knew what we wanted to create, and uh, and everything we I think we circled around that those worlds that have nothing to do with music. Uh, that have still the same possession feel, the fact that you, um, that it deals with possession the same way that Wolfgang Amadeus Phoenix was 
to grab something from the past and make it your own also. And but at the same time, it it was it had something of that, and it was the total opposite. It was just two worlds colliding that were not supposed to be together, and that's something that's always uh, been interesting to us. That uh, you know, you you f you manage to glue two things that are not supposed to uh, to be together, and uh, bankrupt was probably the world that was the furthest from that. From yeah, right. So we. Yeah. Although it's certainly, I mean, if, in as much as it might suggest a paucity of ideas, that's certainly not true here because uh, it's it's the, the 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 musical the creativity on this record is anything but bankrupt. And I'm assuming that after the last record, you're not bankrupt in terms of your financial situation. <laughs> Although maybe you spend so much time biking on and saki yeah. that uh, it's 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 you're right. It's a fascinating juxtaposition. Although I don't know if I'm reading too much into, into titles. You almost did call the album alternative thriller too, right? Or that was, that was a joke? A, no, that was a that that was that was the I, the opposite of Ludwig von Phoenix. That was the something we we that you know was a, a, we were tempted by this, yeah. but we didn't call it. No, we wouldn't call it that way. But we were we liked that idea. To, uh, yeah, Phoenix has been such a success story. You know that last record with the. Um, it, it just got, gained this incredible momentum based on the uh, the songwriting. You did this extensive uh, touring. Um, you've started that up again now with this record. You, you, Coachella in a few weeks. Oshiega this summer. Um, what is what is the I'm almost scared to ask you guys. I'm very curious what your response would be. But what what would be the collective goal for Phoenix at this point? Do what what do you what are you reaching for as a band? What would you like to happen? Where would you like to be a few years from now? I don't I don't think we want to. I mean, I'm not sure we we want to know what this would be. We like questions more than answers. I think you know. Well. Uh, I'm not sure we will want to know. I mean, we right now we're we're taking it a week ahead. We're thinking a week. That's how short. You know, there's some festivals coming that I don't think we're ready, but it <laughs> makes it exciting that you know there's this tension that that there's a dan sense of danger and uh, this idea that you can fail and that's that's vital. That's that's something that you need to make something out of it. You need th this possibility to fail. This it makes it exciting. Otherwise, there's a, you know, if it's like the um, the people that are that are, how do you call, them? the people do uh, on stilts. No, uh, I'm, I'm mimicking. It's like a game now. <laughs> Doing this balancing. No, uh, yeah, tightrope walking. Tightrope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If there's no, you know, if there's no net, it's there's there's a thrill. There's so if Coldplay once said we want we intend to be the best band in the world, <laughs> Phoenix the Phoenix mantra is we want the possibility to fail. Ye yes, that no we we see this this big mountain and oh. uh, we immediately look for the north face because it's going to be pr uh, more exciting, and then we we claim it claim it barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> And that's and that's the beginning. And then when we are there, hopefully, we go back, go down, and then there's another mountain, and that's another week. <laughs> Can you please publish a book of the, the Tao of of Phoenix, the, <laughs> the 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 ideas, the the unwritten, uh, now written ideas of of what it means to be Phoenix? Because I I think it's amazing. Listen, the record, the new record, I told you guys off the air. I'll tell you again. I think is so strong. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Thanks so much for doing Thank this. Thank you. You're gonna play one more song for us. What are you gonna play for yes, us? Yes, uh, 1901.